Hello and welcome everyone to module nine, how to generate high ticket leads. So this is one of the modules that I'm excited to teach because as a copywriter, one of the biggest reasons anybody starts copywriting is because they hear about the big bucks. They hear about the awesome clients. They hear about the great work uh, life balance. They like being able to do cool things uh, in big markets. And in order to do that, you have to find the right kind of clients and you have to charge the right kind of fees to live that lifestyle. But, and there is a big but here, the copywriting world that pays big prices and that, you know, they, they hire good copywriters, they, they do big launches, all that kind of stuff is a different world than a lot of freelancers are used to. It's a different world than a lot of service providers in general are used to. And for copywriters to break into the world of doing higher end jobs for bigger paychecks with bigger launches, it takes a certain type of mindset because at that point, they're no longer somebody who's simply delivering a service. They're someone who is a integral part of the entire marketing phenomenon the entire marketing goal of of getting that big launch so they're an advisor they're a consultant they help on the design you know they write the copy obviously they do a lot of the research of course but they're more integrated into the process than ever before therefore it's more involved and it's a little bit more demanding and honestly it's something that a lot of people don't want to do over and over and again so you'll notice that a lot of freelance copywriters who get up in the ranks and start working at those higher levels there's a lot of pressure when somebody pays you $15,000 to write a promotion and they've got a million dollar launch on the line, then what you write matters versus writing a $500 VSL for a guy who's never going to use it. With that said though, what I'm gonna teach you today is not the be all end all of generating high ticket leads. It's not the only system that is out there. It's not, uh, I'm gonna show you multiple systems today, but the the thing is with generating these high ticket leads, the most important thing to understand is mindset. And the second most important thing to understand is yourself. So if you have the mindset of someone who's really willing to help these high level entrepreneurs, then you're in a good spot. But you also have to understand yourself, your level of skill, what you can bring to the table, whether or not you have the confidence and the ability to produce the results that you're gonna be charging money for. And I think that's really important. That's not a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't talk about that when they're talking about generating high ticket leads because somebody is investing a significant amount of money in you and they are also not just investing the money, but they are expecting a certain ROI and a certain result from you because of that investment. And that's a big burden to bear and it's not for everyone, especially with copywriting in general because with a consultant, you can charge a big fee for consulting and say, well, you know what, uh, it didn't implement properly or, you know, that's how it's supposed to work or, or you know, trust the process or whatever. Like there's some leeway and some uh, fungibility with consulting. But with copywriting, it, your stuff is on the line. Either it converts or it doesn't. So before you start wanting to generate the high ticket leads, it's important to have that level of confidence in yourself and your ability to produce the results before you go and do it. Without further ado, we're gonna dive in here. There are three main types of lead generation that I'm gonna to teach today. There's a lot of training out there on specific systems that people are charging two, five, ten thousand dollars to learn. They've created a system that works for them and they're teaching that system for a high ticket price. Most people are. Some people are teaching it for a lower ticket price, but Keep in mind what I keep telling you through this entire course. Those are systems. Those are templates. Those are things that work for that person in that area of marketing, of industry, of whatever. So when you're looking at the things I'm teaching you right now, don't take them as the be all end all. Take them as guidelines, take them as models, but always put your own research and understanding and knowledge into them as you go. Don't simply trust that just because a system worked for someone and you're paying $5,000 for it, that it's gonna automatically work for you. There's a lot of work around it and there's a lot of stuff that comes with it before you ever step foot uh, into the technical aspect of building a funnel. Let's start with the work. 
So this is what happens before you start building a lean generation system to attract high ticket clients. This is the work that you do now. This is the work you do on this call or on this module in your notebook right here as you're listening and answering these types of questions and listening to me talk, right? If you have to pause it and go back and re-answer it or re-listen, do that because this is where you're going to make your money. So first things first, when you're generating high ticket leads, you want to answer the question, one person, one problem, right? What type of person are you targeting? And what is the major problem that you're solving for them? What is the type of person that you're trying to help? And what is their major problem that you can specifically help with? This question alone is going to give you more clarity than most other copywriters ever have in their entire career. Copywriting is a skill that can be applicable to almost every single industry in the world. So you have a lot of choice here at this point. But it's also a skill that is more valued in certain industries, just like you saw in module eight, certain industries value direct response more so than others. And it's also a skill that scales with the level of business, the level of the entrepreneur that you're working with, and their ability to market their products longer, like evergreen offers or direct mail, that kind of thing. So. When you're thinking about the person that you want to help and the problem that they have, you can't really spend too much time on this because the better you, the more clear you get and the better answer you get, the more money you're going to make in the long run. Let me give you some examples real quick. If you're picking a person to help as a high ticket client, then, and you're a direct response copywriter, let's say you chose option one from the last module and you're going to be a VSL copywriter for fitness, I'm sorry, for diet products that are marketed on ClickBank. Okay, that's a very specific sub niche that you're going to work in, right? You're already at the top of your game because nobody is that specific on what they do. However, now you have hundreds, if not thousands of people who are potential clients for you. So who are you going to look for? Well, you're probably going to look for the diet people, not just on ClickBank, but the people who market diet products via information, via membership site, via ebook, via download, via even physical books that are selling them through direct response. And you're going to go, okay, what types of businesses are doing this? How successful are they? Am I looking for a six-figure personal trainer who's wanting to put their very first book out online? Or am going to help? am I going to help a very high six to seven figure information publisher do a new VSL for their offer? Am I going to help an eight figure publisher do a VSL for their massive offer that gets a ton of affiliates? Who am I going to work with and why? And what is their major problem? I can guarantee that the six figure personal trainer that's publishing their first ebook does not have the same problems that an eight figure affiliate has. And you need to figure out what those problems are for yourself. I'll give you an example. The six-figure uh, personal trainer doesn't know where to start, and they know that copy is important to market this ebook, but they don't really know what right looks like. So being the person to come and show them what right looks like is a value add for them. However, they don't really have the money to uh, pay $15,000 for a VSL if they're only making $100,000 a year because that's something that they have to think long and hard about. <laughs> Do I want to spend a month and a half worth of income on this person to write a VSL for my product and then I still have to go out and get it produced and I have to drive traffic to it and I have to create all the tech behind it and the support behind it. So you can't necessarily blame that person for thinking that $15,000 is a lot of money and won't pay your fees if that's the situation that they're in versus the eight figure entrepreneur who is running a very strong affiliate business with their diet uh, book. They're going to be looking for something to compete with either their, their competitors or their own control. So they already have a VSL that's working great and going to affiliates, but they're noticing their sales dip a little bit. And it's because their VSL is getting tired and they've had a real rough time finding a better VSL writer. And so now they're basically like, I need someone to beat the control, but they can't be crap and I'm not going to waste time and money testing it on someone who's crap. So that's their problem. And they don't care that it costs $15,000. They care that the deadline is at six weeks or eight weeks because they want to move faster than that. They care that you only write, you've only written for supplements and not for diets. They care about that sort of thing. So find your one person 
that has their one problem, doing all the research, finding the big four for this particular type of client, and then start asking yourself the question, do they already pay for copy? What do they already pay for copy? What are they expecting? What I mean, if someone has bought copywriting before from other freelancers, they're usually expecting a certain price point. If somebody already pays $5,000 for a VSL and you pitch $5,000, it's a no-brainer. If somebody already pays $10,000 for a VSL and you pitch $5,000, they go, hmm, why is this guy only five grand? Same thing for 15, same thing for 20. But if you pitch someone a $10,000 VSL and they've only ever paid $500 for a VSL before, you're going to have a very large expectation gap that needs to be made up with all of your marketing, all of your sales ability, and all of the value that you provide before they get to that point. And even then, it's a tough sell. Because if you see a, a car, for example, if you see a car, a 2000, uh, 2012 Honda Civic, and the 2012 Honda Civic used is running around 15,000, I don't know, I'm not a car person, $15,000. And so you look at that and you go, okay, that 2012 Honda Civic runs $15,000. And then somebody's trying to sell their Honda Civic 2012 for $45,000. You go, wait a minute, why is it worth that much? I already have an anchor in my brain about why it's worth that much, why, why it's worth 15,000. Why would it possibly be worth $45,000? And then now that guy who's selling it needs to go, okay, look, well, yeah, the 2012 Honda Civic normally costs $15,000, but mine costs $45,000 because it's got custom wheels, custom rims, custom engine, custom transmission, fully decked out racing bucket seats, like all this kind of stuff. And they go, oh, okay, that makes sense. That's why it's triple the price I was expecting. But you have to ask yourself, do they already pay the prices you're looking for? Do they already have an expectation of a certain type? And that's going to make your job finding the leads much, much easier because you only want to target the people who are already used to paying around the price that you want to. Because if you don't, then you have to do a better job at selling them, which is something that not a lot of freelancers and copywriters really want to get into. If you want to be a good salesman, go for it, man. Try to get the hard leads and figure it out. But if you don't, you want the easy ones, you want the layups, then ask yourself, do they already make these prices? Do they already work with copywriters like me? All that kind of stuff. Do they already have VSLs? Do they already have online products? All those types of questions that ask, do they already, that make your job easier. Now, the work from where you're starting changes depending on which option you chose in module eight. If you chose option one, where you're going to specialize, then you're going to start creating an avatar for your best client using these one person, one problem, and do they already questions. So start thinking, okay, who's my best client, right? Based on the, the niche that I picked, the specialty that I picked, and the type of person and do they already do this kind of stuff. There's gonna be a pretty good, a pretty good angle of your best client when you answer all those questions already and then you just kind of got to dig down and see, okay, do I want to work with the ClickBank guys? Do I want to work with the direct mail guys? Do I want to work with the big publishers? That kind of thing. Like pick your best client. But with option two, if you're going to be a personal brand, then now you have to do some soul searching and decide who do you want to work with. And it might not be a specific industry. It might be a specific type of entrepreneur. Maybe you only like to work with entrepreneurs who own their own company. They're really, really passionate about their project. They're either in personal development or business, but you, the most important thing for you is the passion, the uh, want to change the world type mentality, and the openness to paying higher end prices in order to get things done faster and better with a better type of result. Maybe that's who you want to work with and then you start defining who that is. And now once you define who you want to work with, you start answering the questions, one person, one problem, do they already, all that kind of stuff. So think about it from approaching this, uh, this question from two different angles. Option one is approaching it from the specialty that you already have and you're, so you're answering, answering your questions from basically from the bottom up. And if you're option two, you're answering the questions from the top down because you're picking who you want first and then you're finding what their problem is and do the, and answering the do you already or do they already questions. So that's the work beforehand that you guys want to focus on. The next thing we're going to do is the initial setup. So when you're generating high ticket leads, there's a couple things you need beforehand before you ever start creating anything. And that's going to be a calendar app. So I personally use the app called Schedule Once. 
schedule1.com. That's what I use for my calendar app. I know a lot of people really love using the app Calendly. Uh, it's spelled exactly like it sounds. You can Google it. There's multiple options. My advice would just be to pick one between the two. Schedule Once has a little bit more functionality. Calendly has a little bit better user interface and it's easier to manage. So if you're not very techy, go with Calendly. If you're a little bit techy and you want more stuff, go with Schedule Once. That's really the only decision that you have to make there. Get your initial package options. Now, like we talked about in previous modules, these are not options that you have to put out in public. It's just something for you to understand what your pricing is. Going into a sales conversation or going into a lead prospect conversation with no idea what you're gonna charge and no idea what your rates are normally is a very disempowering position for you. If you go in knowing that you charge $5,000 for a VSL or charge $10,000 for a VSL, and now you're basically trying to qualify the client, that's very different than going into a conversation and going, hmm, I wonder how much I can get out of this person. Or going, hmm, this person sounds like they're only gonna pay $2,000, so I'll just pitch them at 2,000. It becomes a much stronger, more confident position for you if you know what your package options are, even if you don't publish them to the client beforehand. Third thing, get testimonials. There's been other resources in this in this course showing you how to get testimonials and asking for them and basically uh, getting ways to cultivate them. Getting testimonials is going to be one of the most powerful things you can do as a freelancer, as a copywriter, because testimonials tell more of the story than you ever could in your copy. There's ways to make up for not having them as in making people feel more certain, more trusting of you, uh, hitting them up more often so they feel more familiar and they like you and they, and they trust you. But without having testimonials, you've got to do a ton more work than if you just have testimonials up in the front end. So make sure you get them and if you don't have them, be prepared for more work. Be prepared for harder work. But that's why I say get testimonials as quick as you can. The fourth thing is getting a platform. And the platform can be anything from your social media to a fully fledged website. It's not really required to have a fully fledged website or lead capture pages or anything like that beyond a calendar application or beyond a calendar scheduling app because I've built my entire business off of uh, just my social media with no website, no lead capture pages until very, very later in my career. It's not necessary to have a full website before you start this stuff. However, if you want one to be more professional or to be perceived as being more professional, it's up to you and that's something that should be created before you start this process if that's something that you want personally. Don't let it become an obstacle though. A lot of people say, oh, I just need to finish my website and six months later, nothing is done and they haven't got a single client. They're pissed off and wondering why their stuff hasn't worked yet. So only if you want it, but don't let it be an obstacle. Now, let's talk about the organic way to generate high ticket leads. And I say organic because this is what I did for 95% of my career. This is how I got high ticket leads to contact me, how I reached out to them specifically, and a step-by-step -step formula for you to basically go through and do it for yourself. Organically, pick a social media channel that corresponds to your target market and where they are. If you are in the fitness niche, then you might wanna look at Facebook, but you also might wanna engage a little bit more on YouTube or on Snapchat or on Instagram. There's a lot of fitness people who are on those three apps, Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, YouTube, Snapchat, and Instagram, because it's a very visual thing. People wanna see abs, people wanna see bikini bodies, people wanna see tan, they wanna see ripped bodies when they're doing something fitness related. Facebook is a sort of visual mechanism, but there's a lot of rules that go along with fitness and a lot of people have kind of gotten a little ant eh about it in the fitness world. Same thing with B2B. If you're a tech person or a SaaS person, if you're tech and SaaS and you're like in the Silicon Valley scene, you're probably going to want to spend more time on Twitter versus Facebook. You're probably going to want to spend a little bit more time on LinkedIn, maybe more on Reddit because those are where your people hang out. It's important to understand that your target market is in a certain newsfeed and it doesn't have to just be Facebook. But you wanna find the social media channel that your target market is in, pick it, and then commit to that particular social platform.
because that's going to be where you build up your clout, either in option one or option two, because this is the organic way to do things. Find where they are, start building your profile in a very natural way, because you don't want to seem like a marketer. You want to seem like a true person who's in the industry. Now, the next part is to start strategically and gradually adding your ideal prospects. This requires you to know who they are and what they look like on that social media platform, but you're gonna actively go out and add them as a friend, add them as a connection, add them as a follower, or follow their stuff, or on Instagram, follow theirs and hope that they follow you back. Like there's a strategic, gradual process of adding your ideal prospects to your social media because that means that they are now going to be seeing the stuff that you're gonna publish later, natively, so that they start to see your expertise. Keeping in mind, this is a longer way to do things. It's an organic way to do things. It requires a lot of work on the front end without a lot of return in the beginning. However, it's completely free and it is 100% up to your hustle and your ability to produce content for these types of people that attract them. And if you're an expert, if you know what you're talking about when it comes to copywriting in that particular industry or when it comes to copywriting for yourself as a personal brand, then people will automatically gravitate to you because they want to hear experts talk. But if you suck or if you don't actually produce anything of value, then it's not going to work because people don't want to listen to people who are just, uh, you know, uh, self-promoting or all that kind of stuff. It's something where you're going to begin posting the relevant content for your niche and for your expertise and in order to build up the kind of understanding that you're an expert in your industry and you do what you do. And that's kind of how to build it organically. That's what I did. You can see my, you can see me doing it currently with all of my social media. You can see how I did it in the past. There's also uh, groups that you can join in various social networks. There's hashtags you can use on different social networks. There's ways to connect. But the reason I don't bring up a specific strategy for, say, Facebook versus Twitter is because I'm more familiar with Facebook than I am with Twitter, with YouTube, or with Instagram. And the whole point is that these places change every single day. And understanding the native platform is the key to success rather than following a specific system. So pick a social media platform strategically add your ideal prospects, and then begin to truly use the native platform in the way it was designed to post relevant content. Now, that's the front-facing way of doing the organic way. The back, on the back end, as you're engaging these new ideal prospects, then you're basically going to be adding them and when they connect with you, you're gonna be starting a conversation either in direct messenger or in uh, you know directly to their uh, to their inbox or something like that, basically however you connect with them on whatever social media you choose to be in. And you're going to connect with them in a friendly, non, uh, non-aggressive non way and basically say, hey, thanks for connecting. I, I really appreciate it. What is your core business? Or what are you working on right now? Or uh, what does your business do? Or all that kind of stuff. You're engaging them in a friendly conversation that may lead to a potential client work in the future. You're going to ask about three to four questions that kind of qualify them to make sure that they are your ideal person based on the work that you just did. And if they answer those questions the, in a good way that you're happy, to, you know, happy that they're qualified, then the number one goal you want is to get them to schedule a call with you and get on the phone. When we talk about this in module 10, the phone conversation is going to be focused on identifying ways to work with them identifying it's non-salesy, it's not focused on getting as much as you can from them, but instead it's about having friendly conversations that may or may not lead to work. And this is the way to generate goodwill and the, good, and the way to generate a shitload of business as you go through. And this is just the organic way to do that. Three to four easy questions that qualify them as your ideal person. And all of that is designed to get them on the phone with you so that you can actually sell them and figure out whether or not you can work with them. So the, uh, this, is, this is misspelled, but it's meant to say consistency, ideas, and new stuff. That's how to win on an organic lead generation for high ticket leads. Being consistent, having really good ideas, and posting new stuff regularly. That's how to win on an organic way of generating high ticket leads. Like I said, it takes a while, it's hard work, and it's completely free. 
So I would recommend that you at least try it. You start building it up, especially if you're choosing option two. But the this way is going to be the slowest way of doing it. However, it is very effective over time. The next thing we're going to do is paid but scalable. So you're going to spend some money here, probably about 100 to 200 bucks. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can get free trials of certain types of software in order to do this, but there's three main funnels that I wanted to discuss when we're looking at the paid but scalable options. The first one is a guy is one I learned from a kid actually named Peter, and it's a testimonial funnel. This is extremely powerful, and I'm going to share this one first. But you need about 100 to 200 bucks to even start testing it, and even then, if it's not working immediately, it's it's worth it to continue investing to make it work. But we'll talk about some of the whale stuff afterward. We're gonna jump out of the uh, out of the PowerPoint and into my horribly drawn testimonial funnel whiteboard. And as we do that, you're gonna notice that there's a couple things here in addition to chicken scratch, right? There are essentially four parts before the sales call for the testimonial funnel. This is uh, Peter's testimonial funnel that I've kind of modified for a service uh, that isn't an agency. But basically we start with the traffic, whatever social platform you've decided to be on and or non-social online traffic like email, direct, uh, direct type of stuff like banner ads or whatever, whatever your traffic source is, you're going to take that traffic and send it to the initial page. The initial page has a video on it that is either a testimonial or a group of testimonials wrapped around a short VSL about your services. This is basically a direct pitch to work with you as a service provider for the service that you're doing, which in this case would be copywriting, more specifically copywriting for whatever it is you chose to do, whether it's your brand or it's the specific niche and industry. It's going to be directly for that offer, wrapped around testimonials of people that you've worked with or that are happy with your work. Obviously, this requires testimonials. Obviously, this requires, if not one, then multiple types of testimonials for you to wrap into this video. But the power behind this is that it's very, very good at filtering the best type of clients to work with. As long as you're driving the right type of traffic, the right people are going to be going through this funnel. And they're going to see what they want to see first, which is proof. It's certainty. Uh, it is, it's something that's direct and doesn't waste their time. Because if they're a high ticket buyer, they value speed, they value results, they value someone that they can trust, and they value that certainty. So they don't necessarily want to sit through a four part video series just to learn about you if all they need to do is know that, hey, this guy is legit, he's very specific in my industry and I wanna work with him and I wanna see how to do stuff. These are some of the results that he's gotten for other clients, that's important for me. So this is a very powerful funnel to qualify the right type of person for you. The video itself is going to be a short VSL between two to three minutes and the content of the VSL is going to be about two minutes of testimonials and one minute of actual pitching. It starts off with a with an initial, like, if you want this result, then pay close attention to this three-minute video because it's it's going to, you know, be beneficial for you type copy. Then it launches into the first testimonial, which is the biggest and best testimonial that you can possibly get in its entirety. So between 30 seconds to 45 seconds of that testimonial. And then it goes into either a, you know, hi, I'm so-and-so, and, -so, and I, uh, I'm looking for a few of my dream clients type work or it goes into more testimonials and wrapped around the whole offer which is that hey I'm this type of copywriter these are the results that I get and if you want to work with me then hit this button below this button right here is going to lead them to the next part of the funnel which is an application so the application to work with you is going to be relatively simple but also qualifying now Peter does not use Wufu he instead uses a site called Typeform and if you haven't heard of Typeform it's a it's a lightweight type of quiz that's going to, you're going to show it, you'll see it here just in a second, but it's a beautiful way of doing things. And people actually use this type of application 60 to 70% more than a typical Wufu form or an application. That's the key to, there's a couple actual really ninja things in this. And I hate using that term, but it's, it, it is true. 
the application used in Typeform is going to convert much, much higher than sending them to a traditional Google Sheet or a uh, Wufu form. That's why I would recommend using this particular site. It does cost some money uh, in order to use it, but I think there might actually be a free option. I don't know. Um, there might be, yeah, it looks like there's a free option uh, and otherwise 30 bucks a month. Uh, it is billed annually, but obviously if you're getting a client for $5,000, it's worth it um, to upgrade to the pro and that's it. But there is a free option and you're allowed to answer basic questions and all that kind of stuff for free. So I would highly recommend checking it out and making sure that you are happy with it. But the way that it's designed gets that 60% plus response rate rather than you know the 10% or whatever that a typical sheet gets. So Typeform, use Typeform for this application. Ask questions that are relevant to make sure that they are your ideal client. How big is their business? How much do they spend on advertising? What is their email list size? What types of products do they market and what are the price points of those products? When was the last time they did a direct response style launch or promotion? You know, what types of um, markets are they dealing with? That sort of thing. All the types of qualifying questions that you want for your ideal client. I'm not gonna tell you what to ask because it's your client in your industry and your relevancy and I'm putting the onus on you to understand that the perfect client for you is not going to be the same perfect client for me or for other copywriters and that's gonna set you apart. Using Typeform, they're going to fill this out and they're going to go to the next page which is technically a thank you page. This video here is a thank you page, is a thank you video that says, hey, thank you for filling out our application. We really appreciate your time and interest in this. However, and here's the key, this is the second ninja part. However, the due to the number of applications we get per week, we're ha we have to uh, limit our conversations only to the people who are most qualified for our services. If you want to jump to the front of the line, call this number here, which is going to be a Google voice number or a number that you set up and, and leave a message with your phone number, your name and your email address and we will contact you within 24 to 48 hours to discuss your project. That is the video and then you put the number here. This number using Google voice, which is also free, can then go to a voicemail that is recorded and says, hey, thank you for calling the, uh, the urgency hotline or thank you for calling the front of the line service. Please leave your name, your email, your website down below and we will contact you within the next 24 to 48 hours. That is going to put you on the phone with the top 10% of people who are extremely excited to work with you and then will obviously yield the best results because they're actually action takers. This is the best way to filter people through a funnel that makes sense and is very active that I've ever come across for service providers. Full stop. It's extremely simple because it talks only to the direct people like we talk about in our course, the level one, level two aware people, and it gives them exactly what they want. It's an easy application and filters them for you and then it gives you the hottest leads on a silver platter right here. And then if you ever run out or you don't have enough people calling this thing, then you can go and contact the rest of the applications as they are scheduled uh, or as they sit there. That's going to be the most powerful thing and the most powerful funnel for you to try and do. And again, we'll talk in module 10 about the conversations to have with these type of people, but the testimonial funnel, like I said, is one of the most powerful ways to get qualified people into your into your funnel as quickly as possible. So with that said, let's go into the research funnel. So the research funnel is what you do basically if you don't have testimonials yet or if you want to do something different than what I just said about the testimonial funnel. You don't necessarily want to go through that whole thing. The research funnel is going to put the onus on you as a researcher to create a piece of content that is so relevant to your perfect client that they have no choice but to consume that content. And the best example I can give of that is Mr. Rich Sheffrin. Uh, if you haven't heard of Rich Sheffrin, he runs a company called Strategic Profits and he's one of the gurus to the gurus. And one of the things that he wrote was the Internet Business Manifesto. 
And the Internet Business Manifesto was essentially ahead of its time. It was an ebook before ebooks were really big, and it was a report that was written specifically for the exact problem that most Internet entrepreneurs were having at the time, which was shiny object syndrome. Coincidentally, they still have that problem. It's a recurring problem. But Rich built a multi-million dollar company off of the back of this one report. And I think it's important to realize that it's only 31 pages, and he did it by going through forums and going through groups and figuring out what the main problems were, and then simply writing a strong report that would get them the result that they wanted, which was basically to change their mind from being an opportunity seeker to an entrepreneur. And that set them up to want to buy his services. In this case, it was a product that they were buying, but the same thing can apply for someone like yourself who is selling a service. The outcome that you want them to re realize at the end of it is that copywriting's hard, and in order to get the right results, they need the right kind of copy for their specific industry, and the only way to do that is to hire an expert in their industry. That's the type of result you want for them. By providing them with industry-specific relevant research, you not only demonstrate your expertise, but you also give them the opportunity to reach out to you if they are a perfect prospect. You say, hey, we just did this, uh, this work for you. This, uh, you know, we get, showed you our expertise. We showed you some of the stuff that's really going to help your business. But if you want to go further, reach out to us and we'll work, to, we'll work together. The people who do reach out to you are going to be amazing leads amazing type of clients because they've done the homework, they cared enough to grow their business, and now they're reaching out to you specifically because you were the one that helped them with that. That is the research funnel in a nutshell, and all it takes is a squeeze page to this report. And if you wanna get really fancy, then you can do a squeeze page to the report and then do a video summary of the report and a button that says contact me here for your application or for your uh, calendar. It's a very simple process with the research funnel. The work on the front end is getting a really good report and making sure that the report by itself can stand alone as a very valuable piece of content, but it also drives people to want your expertise and, and want to work with you further. The best person that I can, I can show is Rich Sheffern in that regard, so I would go through his funnel and see what he does in order to get the best way to do that. However, there's lots of other people who've published solid stuff in other niches for uh, marketing. Dan Kennedy is excellent at this as well. All of his books are basically research funnel beginnings. And it's it's something that you can consider if you don't have testimonials to try and do uh, Peter's testimonial funnel. The last one in the paid but scalable is a live webinar. And a live webinar is also very simple because all you need is a registration landing page, which you can get either for free through the webinar uh, software or for a free trial on any of the landing page softwares that you can go out and buy. And but with that free trial, you basically drive traffic to a live webinar. On the live webinar, you teach a specific system that is going to be appealing to someone that wants to implement it implement that in their business. And at the end of the webinar, the pitch is very simple. You simply say, hey, if you like the system that you saw today and you think it's gonna work for your business, we do implementation of this system for our clients and you just reach out to us here. It's a very, very simple webinar. It doesn't have to be this you know, three point, all this craziness the way that most people do because what you're selling is a service. And the best thing about selling a service is that you can give away the farm on all of your content and still get amazing sales because people want you to do it for them. You don't have to hide stuff. You don't have to hide the fact that you're doing you know, the same thing as everyone else. All you can say is, hey, we're doing this, we're experts at it, or I'm doing this, I'm an expert at it, and I do this for clients. If you want to work with me, then reach out to me right now and we'll, and we'll get started. The people who wanna do it themselves should not be on a phone with you. The people who want to run off with your content to republish it and sell it as a course, don't you don't want to be on the phone with them. You're not selling courses. You're not selling programs. You're selling your service to a high-ticket buyer. And that high-ticket buyer cares about certainty, speed, results, quality, and trust. And all of those things can be created through a judicious uh, education process on what you're about to do for them. Everything else is irrelevant. So when you look at these marketers who are like, yeah, just give them a little bit or move the free line or whatever you got to do, that's not the point if you're a service provider. The point is to show them enough value 
on the front end that they get that speed, result, certainty, quality, and trust that a high ticket buyer needs in order to reach out to you and give you $10,000 to do the damn thing for them. That's the most important thing. So let's jump back in here and we're going to go to the whale methods. All right, whale methods, guys. This is for the people who have more money than time or the people who want to really implement a hands-off, fully automated, I don't want to even talk to them until there's money in the bank type thing, right? Because this takes a lot to set up. It costs money to set up. And it's really only for people who have the ability to do it right. It should never be done half-assed, any of these methods. Okay, because half-assed, it just won't work at all. But when you full it, or when you're full on with it, then they work extremely well, and you can notice their success all over the all over the industry. So, when I say full production lead generation funnel, a full production lead generation funnel is from front to end a full ad campaign on multiple ad platforms, whether it be YouTube and Facebook, or Twitter and Facebook, or uh, you know YouTube and Instagram, or whatever it happens to be. Um, full ad breakdown there to either multiple landing pages or multiple types of lead magnets and because it's going to capture every every level of awareness that is there for your particular ideal client and every single question that they'd be asking themselves if they're solution aware you know every every uh, objection that they're going to have and then that moves them into obviously the sales piece where they're going to be seeing the service that you're going to offer to them. It's an answer to their specific question. Those people are funneled into a bigger conversation about whether or not they are a fit for you as a qualified client. And then they move on to the sales conversation, which is obviously, you know, pay me money for whatever it is that you uh, followed up, followed us up with. It's a full production. And it takes a long time and it takes a lot of money to implement because you have to find every single one of those problems. You have to tweak it and optimize it and you have to have, have the people to handle the leads. So full production is basically looking at a sales funnel and going, I'm going to do all that. That's full production. The next option is an automated webinar with SMS follow-up. So an automated webinar is a webinar that you pre-record and upload into a service like uh, Stealth Seminar or Ever Webinar, or I know I, I know ClickFunnels now has one built into it, and basically it runs automatically on the hour every hour, or as often as you want, or whatever hours you want. It goes from a registration page that it is usually fed by some sort of cold traffic, and goes directly into the automated webinar. They watch the webinar. They get led into an application page. That application ac application page goes to a thank you page where they can see some testimonial videos and go through all that. And at every level, there's going to be follow-ups with the person who registered. So if they registered for an automatic webinar for the next day, they get a text message on that day saying, hey, your webinar starts in an hour. If they missed the webinar time they signed up for, then the text message is going to say, hey, saw so you missed the webinar. Do you want to watch the replay? And it's going to follow them all the way through this process and basically make it uh, impossible to ignore once they've actually engaged with the process. That's going to keep... And it's also going to drive the number one goal, which is you want to get them on the phone. In this case, you want to get qualified people on the phone. So you can obviously send them to a closer first or to an appointment setter or something like that. Again, we're dealing with whale methods where you have the money and time to hire people who are doing the right thing. But it's extremely effective to get qualified clients at scale or to deal with only the most qualified clients if you're trying to run some sort of boutique style agency where you know your price points are extremely high. Uh, there's some new interesting things coming out where you can actually create bots in Facebook Messenger that message people back and forth and that are part of your funnels. Uh, you can see Frank Kern doing this with his newest book, which we talk about in Next, which is the print book to the strategy session and SMS follow-up with Messenger. Basically, it's taking all the new tactical stuff and applying it in in unique ways, like with Facebook following up with someone who registers for the webinar, and an hour beforehand they get a Facebook message rather than an SMS that says, hey, uh, make sure you're at your computer in an hour because your webinar is going to start. Or, hey, I saw you missed the webinar. Do you want to chat right here? And then they hit the button yes, and they go to a closer or yourself, and they chat on Facebook Messenger just fine. That's some more things that you can incorporate when you've got the whale methods going on. You're willing to invest the time and energy into these types of tactics. 
again, I recommend you do these after you've done the other stuff so that you have the money and time and energy to put into doing this right. The next option is obviously to print a book. So in order to do that, you have to write the book and you have to get the book published and you can either self-publish or you can put it through a publisher. You can do, do that entire process. That's an entirely other course webinar year long thing. Um, to get the book published. And then once that happens, you're going to do a free plus shipping offer for the book that is going to lead into either a pitch for the strategy session via video or for, through a video series or an automated webinar or even just a PDF that then obviously gets all the sort of follow up going with it. And then finally, the ultimate whale method is to be backed by a celebrity or co-brand with a huge guru in your space. You can pay for celebrities to back your brand. And it's actually not as expensive as you would think, but it's still pretty expensive. So, you know, you can get uh, a former basketball player to say that you're awesome for $10,000. You can get a B list celebrity for $50,000 to, you know, do a video with you or to do a video for you. And it's something that when you're at that level, it can kick you up to the guru status very rapidly if you're willing to pay for it. You can see people who've paid for celebrity exposure that rapidly made them gurus like Ty Lopez. You can see uh, you know, Dan Kennedy doing this with lots of people. You can see them with multiple types of people who are paying either celebrities or gurus in their niche or co-authors like Jack Canfield or uh, Brian Tracy, people like that who are building their clout through association. And they're doing that by paying for it and getting it done as quickly as possible. So all of these methods sound really good in your head, but the way to implement them by the time you get to that point is going to be very specific to whatever option you choose and also how much money and time you want to invest in this particular method. So I bring this up as kind of a mind expander, but not as a step-by-step -step do this, do that, because you need anywhere from fifty dollars to $100,000 to implement this properly. That is the end of the high ticket lead generation module. Now there's a few things that, let's get out of here real quick. There's a few things that I, I wanna say at the end here, which is, like I said at the beginning, you just got a lot of different methods to implement to try and get high ticket leads. If you were expecting a step, like, you know, click right here on the Facebook ad platform, write this thing as a headline, use this image on to create your ad, target these people to get high ticket leads, then that is not the expectation that that is accurate or is, uh, is something that's actually disempowering for you personally. Because when with everyone out there, every marketer, who is trying to sell you a lead generation system, they're selling you what I call a silver platter or a, um, they're basically selling you the fish, right? In the, the old parable, you know, give a man a fish and he eats for a day, teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime. Well, most people either want to buy the fish every day or they just, they want to buy a pile of fish if they have the money for it. What you guys paid me for and the reason you're in this mentorship and the reason you're working so hard is because you genuinely want to learn how to fish. And I can't teach you how to fish by tying the flies for you, showing you exactly where to throw the lure and then sitting there holding the rod for you until the fish bites, pulling it and then giving it to you. That's not how you teach someone to fish. With high ticket lead generation, it's not about a specific system. It's not about who has the fanciest webinar right now. It's not about who has the biggest opportunity for you to go buy stuff right now. It's about understanding that the one person, one problem issue is the most important thing you can possibly know about high ticket leads and that high ticket leads are looking for speed, results, certainty, quality, and trust. They don't care about cost. They don't care that uh, you may be new at something. All they care about is being able to achieve the result, getting the speed of the result, trusting that you have the right quality and certainty to your work in order to get them what they need that, uh, for what they're paying for. They don't, they're not a consumer. They're an entrepreneur. They're, they're a high level operator. 
And by starting to think like them and starting to understand what their motivations are, you can start to craft lead generation that makes sense for whatever your situation is and whoever your ideal client is without having to fall into the trap of going, oh, I need an automatic webinar, or oh, I need Facebook ads, or oh, I need to do YouTube, or Twitter is important, or LinkedIn, or blah. Like, having all those tactics swirling around in your head is only going to disempower you when it comes to generating high ticket leads. What's going to empower you to generate high ticket leads is knowing that it doesn't matter what social media ad platform is out there. It doesn't matter what uh, lead capture pages are out there right now. It doesn't matter if people are watching videos or reading sales letters because what does matter is that you understand your market, you understand your one person, one problem, you understand that they already do the things that you're asking them to do or are looking for them to do, and you understand what your goals are as a copywriter, whether you want to go into a specific industry or build your personal brand. By understanding those four things, you have empowered yourself to go through an entire career, the next 50 years of working as a freelance copywriter, as a business owner, as someone who owns multiple businesses, because you don't have to be beholden to all these stupid systems that people are trying to sell you. Instead, you're gonna be focused on answering the big important questions. What person am I helping and what problems do they need help with? Do they already do the things that I want them to do? Am I doing what I want to do based on uh, my goals? And am I reaching them in the most effective way for where they're currently at right now? That's empowering. So you can use the tactics that I showed you in this video immediately, organically, using the paid but scalable options, and even using the whale methods. All you have to do is pick them and understand the answers to those four questions. Pick one and answer, the four, answer those four questions, and you're off to the race. You're done. You can start generating high-ticket leads because you now have the ability to answer questions that will come up that there is no way a person who's selling a system could ever teach you. And you're not going to get pissed off because they told you one thing and it ends up being wrong because it was a month ago and Facebook changed something. Now you're empowered. Now you can go do it. Now you can go find the high ticket leads. And next week, when you get module 10, we're going to talk about how to close those leads in an effective, non-salesy way that makes everybody feel better about the whole situation, gets you better clients, and focuses on getting the best result that you can charge the most money for. So hope you enjoyed module nine. Let me know how you think about it in the group. And I will see you on the Q&A calls and during the hot seats. Have a wonderful day.